Dezo savored the refreshing feeling that coursed through his body as the doctor delved into a detailed explanation. He elaborated on how Dezo's original physical form possessed inherently tangled meridians, which would have perpetually hindered his progress beyond the third-rate level. By inadvertently circulating his key in the wrong manner during the cultivation test, Dezo had taken a daring gamble. It was a risky move that ultimately untangled his meridians, but came at the cost of his own life. The doctor found himself torn between considering Desso a genius for his audacity or a fool for his recklessness. The revelation that his lack of advancement in his previous life was not due to a lack of effort but rather a deficiency in natural talent left Desso astounded. It shattered the perception he had held onto for so long, causing him to reassess his own abilities. The divine doctor, deeply impressed by Desso's resilience and determination to defy fate, commended him wholeheartedly. Never before had the doctor encountered an individual who had so forcefully altered their own destiny. Curiosity brimming within him, Desso couldn't help but question the doctor further. He wanted to know if his actions had paved the way for him to cultivate Key in the traditional manner, following the conventional flow. The doctor gazed at him intently, a mix of sternness and amusement on his face, and remarked, You truly knew what you were doing. No one else would have dared to attempt something so foolish. With those words... Desso realized that he could no longer hide the fact that his actions had been intentional rather than accidental. Expanding on his explanation, the doctor cautioned Desso about the intricacies of his unique situation. He divulged that, due to the long-standing entanglement of his meridians, even if they were forcibly untangled, they would inevitably revert back to their original state due to the inherent nature of his body. Furthermore, the slightest deviation from the correct path would result in immediate and fatal consequences. Desso had initially sought an easier life, yet instead found himself teetering on the brink of death. The doctor's extraordinary skills and ability to comprehend the distinctive structure of Deso's meridians left him in awe. Deso had been destined to meet his demise, but instead he had defied fate and emerged as a prodigious genius. The concept of two individuals possessing the heavenly martial constitution concurrently intrigued Deso. He contemplated the potential implications such an unprecedented occurrence could have on the martial realm. With this newfound insight... Desso's perception of his own identity and potential underwent a profound transformation. In the presence of his father who labeled him a fool for tangling his own meridians, Desso summoned the courage to inquire about his prospects of learning martial arts. The doctor's response, tinged with a mix of admiration and caution, revealed that Desso would be unable to pursue most martial arts, including the esteemed great breathing technique. Should he attempt to cultivate such techniques, his meridians would mercilessly rip apart. The revelation brought a smile to Desso's face as he realized that he could now navigate life on his own terms, and that his father would be powerless to influence his choices. A summons from his father beckoned the arrival of Agent One, a member of the formidable Shadow Guardian squad entrusted with protecting the Patriarch. Deso found himself intrigued by Agent One's sudden appearance, seemingly out of thin air. In his father's hands, Agent One presented a martial arts book, intended as a personalized gift for Deso. The title bestowed upon Deso's chosen martial art, the three basic sword technique filled him with mild disdain. He dismissed it as a mere third-rate manual that could easily be acquired from a local market. To him, it appeared to be a rudimentary introduction to swordsmanship, devoid of complex key manipulations. Nevertheless, Deso resigned himself to half-heartedly pursuing this martial art, sensing that his father had once again cast him aside. Leaving the company of his father and the doctor, Deso felt a rumble of hunger emanating from his stomach. Unbeknownst to him, the martial arts bestowed upon him by his father would soon send shockwaves throughout the clan, igniting chaos and upheaval. As he stood before a building that once symbolized his exile from the clan in his previous life, Desso's return was met with excited greetings from the maids. Their words echoed with warmth and familiarity. One maid affectionately remarked on the noticeable weight loss Desso had undergone, while another eagerly suggested that he replenish his energy with a satisfying meal. Grateful for their care and attention, Desso happily agreed. Realizing that his desperate pursuit of approval from his brothers and father in his past life paled in comparison to the genuine support and affection he now received from the maids. In their presence, he finally felt a sense of belonging, albeit knowing that he would eventually have to depart for a more extravagant realm that offered greater freedom. Dezo, having satiated his hunger, left the dining area and instructed his maid to take a break. Reflecting on his recent encounters with the divine doctor and his father, he couldn't help but contemplate the significance of his heavenly constitution. Considered among the best, it was believed to hold the martial knowledge of the heavens, a constitution akin to that of a martial god, rarely seen in a generation. Yet, despite possessing such a constitution, Deso couldn't discern any tangible difference within himself. Doubts flooded his mind as he pondered the daunting task of surpassing his eldest brother, who was on track to reach the level of a reformed grandmaster within a mere decade. 
He understood that martial arts was not a realm where success could be achieved through constitution alone. It required talent, sensibility, intelligence, tenacity, and even luck. How could he possibly catch up in just ten years, considering his body had never even touched the surface of martial arts? Even if he were to be taught by a martial master, the challenge seemed insurmountable. Diso couldn't help but wonder if his father had merely given him false hope, and whether the entire plan had veered off course. Nonetheless, his desire to escape the confines of the clan and pursue his dreams remained unchanged. Knowing his father's personality, Deso concluded that his secret would remain undisclosed to the other clan members. Besides, he hadn't heard any gossip about his encounter with the Divine Doctor. Deciding it was time to retire for the night, Deso found himself in his room, appreciating one of the privileges of living in the strongest clan, a lack of assassination risks. His gaze fell upon the martial arts book resting on the nightstand and since sleep eluded him, he decided to delve into its contents. According to the book's author, the technique was crafted with the intent of reaching the heavens. Diso couldn't help but laugh, thinking that the author would have made a better writer than a martial artist. The book, however, lacked the profound philosophies found in the martial arts of the Wudang sect. The flashy feints of the Mount Hua sect, the incredible speed capable of piercing the sun seen in the Dian Kong sect, or the vast collection of knowledge possessed by the Shaolins. Instead, its teachings focused on three fundamental movements, swinging upwards, swiping downwards, and cutting horizontally. While Deso found the reading to be a pleasant way to pass the time, he couldn't help but wonder about its deeper implications. Those who embarked on the path of sword mastery often contemplated the ultimate goal of swordsmanship, a destination to strive towards. For some, it was the manifestation of key swords. For others, it involved key manifestation itself, sword kinesis, or even the elusive concept of the sword heart, Yet many failed to comprehend the importance of the starting point, the foundation upon which all swordsmanship was built. Whether it was the Taiji of Wudang, the Plum Blossoms of Mount Hua, or the Sun of Dian Kong, the initiation of all these techniques involved the simple actions of stabbing, cutting, and swinging. By honing one's ability to stab faster and faster, a practitioner could generate a flash of brilliance capable of piercing the heavens and reaching the sun. By adding complexity to the movements, one could create breathtaking plum blossom patterns in the sky and by executing gentle swings, the essence of Taiji could be evoked. The author asserted that these concepts were easy to grasp for the diligent reader, but Deso still struggled to fully comprehend them. The author claimed to have mastered all the swordsmanship styles in the world, and distilled them into three fundamental actions, heaven, earth, and human. With perfect mastery of these three actions, the author believed one could adapt to any swordsmanship style. However, Deso remained skeptical, considering the author to be nothing more than a con man. The name of the technique was the Three Basic Sword Technique. Even after partaking in a meal, sleep continued to elude Deso. Perhaps he had overindulged. His gaze shifted towards the sword, which beckoned to him, despite late-night exercises not typically being his preference. Resolving to pick up the sword, Deso felt an inexplicable connection to it, fueling his curiosity and desire to explore its potential. Meanwhile, on the roof of the manor, the patriarch and the divine doctor sat together, indulging in the pleasure of fine liquor. The doctor couldn't help but compliment the quality of the drink, captivated by its flavor. Below them, numerous martial artists engaged in spirited sparring sessions, adding to the ambiance. It was during this tranquil moment that both men noticed Diso's approach. However, the divine doctor couldn't help but feel annoyed by Diso's careless handling of the sword. He believed Deso should treat it with the utmost reverence and appreciation for its value. The doctor stood in absolute astonishment, his eyes fixed upon Deso's impeccable technique and profound understanding of the sword. He couldn't help but question the patriarch, wondering if he had secretly guided Deso when no one was looking. The doctor's disbelief overwhelmed him as he stared in awe at the sight before him. He was well aware that Deso had been granted a genuine copy of the legendary Sword Emperor's technique. However, this technique was primarily intended to lay the foundation for swordsmanship, serving as a starting point for aspiring martial artists. Yet, Deso's mastery of the moves was astonishingly advanced, far exceeding the doctor's expectations. In Deso's past life, he had swung the sword countless times, hundreds of thousands in fact. As a result, the three basic sword technique held little challenge for him. With a fluid motion, he effortlessly raised the sword as if connecting the heavens and the earth, executing the technique with unparalleled grace. Despite his expertise, Deso continued to search for the next step in the book, only to discover that he had already reached the end. This unexpected realization left him both surprised and intrigued. Setting the book aside, he pondered the possibility that he, too, could create something similar and proceeded to continue his training. Determined to improve further, he decided to swing the sword a few more times before retiring for the night. 